This demonstration will show the correct procedure for performing debridement of a black eschgar such as commonly found on a sacral pressure ulcer or a pressure ulcer of a lower extremity site. Initially in this demonstration you will see a pig's foot and a demonstration of the correct method of anesthetizing with injectable anesthetics such as lidocaine. Additionally, a topical anesthetic may be used. When performing debridement of a black eschgar of a pressure ulcer etiology, commonly the only area that is sensate and may cause discomfort to the patient without adequate anesthesia is the interface between the necrotic tissue and the healthy remaining skin. To adequately anesthetize the area for debridement, a small wheel on the edge of the healthy skin can be created with injectable anesthetic. This is then extended underneath the area to be debrided in a fan-like fashion. Once adequate anesthesia has been performed, the necrotic area is addressed. A number 15 scalpel or a dermal curette can be used. Oftentimes a forcep is also helpful. Initially, the leading edge or interface between the normal skin and the necrotic area is identified. This is where debridement should begin. A small incision at this interface is made to create a leading edge. This is then elevated using the forceps or the dermal curette. Tension is maintained on the black eschgar and the interface between the subcutaneous and the epithelial tissue is incised with the scalpel. Using the edge of the scalpel and the body of the blade, adequate incision can be performed. It is important to identify the interface between the necrotic tissue and healthy tissue and maintain incision within this plane. As one performs the debridement, the necrotic eschgar will begin to peel off similar to how an orange peel removes from the orange fruit itself. As you can see in this demonstration, this plane is being developed and the demonstrator is working around three edges of the eschgar maintaining the interface between the healthy tissue and the dead necrotic tissue while maintaining tension with the forceps. It is common that the interface between the necrotic tissue and the healthy tissue, as I had stated previously, is an area that can be sensitive to debridement without adequate anesthesia. In addition, this is where one will find the most vascular portion of the wound and maintaining the interface just on the side of the necrotic tissue can minimize bleeding as well as discomfort. If a patient is on anticoagulant medications such as Coumadin, Plavix, or a heparin type medication, it may be judicious to perform a staged debridement so as to control any hemorrhage that could occur. Once the majority of necrotic tissue has been removed, one can use the edge of the scalpel or a dermal curette to remove any remaining necrotic tissue that may be present between the interface of the normal tissue and the necrotic tissue that has been removed. This will illustrate the various levels of tissue that may be encountered during a debridement. Initially, one can see the epithelial surface. And immediately underneath this is the subcutaneous tissue. And at the base of the wound here, one can see the muscle level. Just immediately above that, there is a fascial plane. When performing a debridement, commonly skin and subcutaneous tissues are removed in the necrotic area. In addition, the fascial plane may be removed and necrotic tissue may be removed from the muscle level as well. Mm -hmm.